The following video is sponsored by InstantMaddenCoins.com. The only place to get Madden coins instantly on every console and platform is InstantMaddenCoins.com. Use code CLICKWID at checkout for a 10% discount. News broke today that the Dallas Cowboys will officially be releasing quarterback Tony Romo from their roster on Thursday, March 9th. The move will mark the end of Romo's 14-year run as a Cowboy and further entrenches Dak Prescott as the team's quarterback of the present and the future. As a huge Romo fan myself, and with him now staring down free agency, I thought this would be a good time to take a look at a few potential landing spots for old number 9. So in today's video, I'll be counting down the top 5 best fits for the best quarterback available in free agency, Tony Romo. Starting things off, we have the New York Jets. Now, this is a franchise that was absolutely terrible in 2016. Embarrassing. But they're looking to completely revamp their team in 2017. And that might mean bringing in a stopgap at quarterback. They tried to do that already with Ryan Fitzpatrick, but inconsistency, turnovers, and a general disagreement with management led to Fitzpatrick not getting the long-term deal that he wanted with the team. If the Jets can get Romo for a decent price, they'd likely be willing to move on from Fitzpatrick, but the biggest problem with New York as a landing spot for Romo is that the team is just in full-on rebuild mode, and Romo wants to win now. Still, money talks, and Tony Romo would definitely have a tough time turning them down if they do opt to offer him big money in comparison to the other teams that are going to be vying for his services. Another team that's in somewhat of a rebuilding mode and is still looking for an answer at quarterback is the Chicago Bears. Chicago has been dealing with some terrible quarterback play as of late. Jay Cutler came to the team and gave fans a lot of high hopes, but that love that they once had for him has certainly since fizzled out. What's funny is that Cutler and Romo actually face a lot of the same criticisms from the media and even from fans. People rightfully criticize them as players who are a little too willing to take risks, especially at critical points in the game. But if you look at the actual numbers behind both these players, it's really not even a close contest between Cutler and Romo. There's really no question that the Bears would be getting a huge upgrade if they moved on from Cutler and signed Romo. Unfortunately, like the Jets, the Bears are kind of a tough sell right now for a veteran signal caller like Romo who really wants to silence the naysayers and get that Super Bowl ring. So Chicago, like I said, definitely a rebuilding team and certainly they'd be better off talent-wise than the Jets. So I can see them being a little bit higher up on this list than the Jets. However, I'm still not thinking that they're in the top three. So that's why they're down here at number four. If 2016 showed us one thing about Kansas City, it's that this franchise is on the verge of making some serious splashes in the postseason. Unfortunately, one of the biggest things holding them back is that their offense is simply not explosive enough to fight blow for blow against the likes of a Pittsburgh or a New England in the AFC. Sure, the Chiefs could again win the AFC West, but if they get blown out again in the playoffs, what does that really prove? Tony Romo would give the Chiefs the kind of playmaking quarterback that the franchise has been arguably missing since the days of Joe Montana. They probably need to still at least add one more pass catcher to the roster in some sort of form, but with the breakout season of Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill this past season, the Kansas City offense is just begging. It's just waiting for that quarterback who's capable of making more happen than Alex Smith. On paper, this seems like a really great move for the Chiefs to make, but the biggest thing holding them back is this Andy Reid system. Reid's offense is a West Coast type of system that utilizes the running game and the short, safe passing game to keep possession of the rock and nickel and dime defenses down the field. Romo, for all his positives, does have some negatives. One of those negatives is that he likes to take chances. He has absolutely no problem throwing the ball up into coverage and just giving his receivers a chance to make a play. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That, I think, would drive Andy Reid absolutely nuts. So I think Kansas City needs to make a move at quarterback if they really want to take the next step and become a contender. I'm not entirely sure that Romo is the most likely option to make that happen. 
just one season after signing Brock Osweiler to a long-term deal for huge money, the Texans may very well be looking at another quarterback this offseason. Houston somehow managed to win the AFC South, and they even won a playoff game largely due to the great matchup they had against Oakland Sands' Derek Carr, but there's no question that the quarterback position was a major problem for this team in 2016. It was so bad that DeAndre Hopkins, who finished as one of the league's top pass catchers with over 1,500 yards in 2015, failed to reach even 1,000 receiving yards in 2016 despite playing all 16 games. The Texans were still without former Defensive Player of the Year J.J. Watt all season, so the defense could presumably be even better this upcoming season than they were in 2016, but that alone isn't likely going to be enough to make them get a deep playoff run. Houston needs a spark at quarterback, and they may very well view Romo as the piece they need to make a run this season. This would be a perfect landing spot for Romo if the Texans didn't already have so much money locked up at quarterback. Of course, Houston can still make this happen, but they'd be really mortgaging their future and throwing away a lot of money, as well as writing off Brock Osweiler entirely by signing Romo. It's definitely not entirely out of the question that the Texans do end up getting Romo, so that's why they're ranked number two on this list, but I think there's one team that seems like the most likely landing spot for Tony Romo. When the Colts cut Peyton Manning after drafting Andrew Luck, the Broncos really didn't look like a likely suitor for the former NFL MVP. They had just won a playoff game with Tim Tebow, and the roster was very much built to be a run-first system which capitalized on Tebow's skills. But that all changed very quickly once John Elway realized that he had a real shot to land Manning. The Broncos ended up signing Manning and got rid of Tebow for practically nothing, ushering in a completely new, high-powered passing offense that was tailor-made for Peyton Manning. The result, of course, was one of the most spectacular offenses in NFL history. Numerous playoff runs came of it, an eventual Super Bowl trophy came to Manning and his Broncos. Fast forward to 2017, and the Broncos not only have one young quarterback, they have two. Trevor Simeon and Paxton Lynch. The difference, of course, is that neither of these players looked particularly promising during their opportunities in 2016, and the Broncos failed to even make the playoffs after winning it all the previous year. While the Broncos' defense continues to be one of the absolute best in the league, the offense struggled mightily to put up points with any sort of consistency. The high-powered passing game from the Manning days is now a thing of the past. But with a guy like Tony Romo, there's really no reason to believe that those days of monster production in the passing game couldn't return. Yes, Romo is older, and yes, he has some serious injury risks, but you can't tell me that the current Romo... The guy who we saw drive down the field and score a touchdown easily in his only drive in 2016 is not substantially better than the mediocrity that the Broncos dealt with in 2016. Honestly, he's even a lot better than what Peyton Manning was in 2015 when the Broncos won the Super Bowl. I tweeted earlier this past season that the Broncos should have been on the phone with the Cowboys making a deal for Romo before the deadline. Obviously, that didn't happen, and the Broncos paid the price by not making the playoffs. Now they have the opportunity to right that wrong and put themselves back into Super Bowl talks by signing Romo and making a commitment to make a run at the trophy this year. I know it's hard sometimes to understand what's exactly going to happen with this whole situation, but one thing seems to be sure. Romo's going to be somewhere else this season, and if he can stay healthy, he's going to be a huge upgrade to whatever lucky team lands his services. So what do you guys think? Where does Romo play this season? What do you think is going to happen? Let me know in the comments section below, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please do me a favor, drop a like, make sure that you subscribe to the channel as well if you are new, and I'll talk to you guys again soon.